Good morning. Today is Sunday, February 2nd, 2020. Groundhog Day. What we've been doing in our books, our Northern Paganism series, is slowly progressing into more and more study guide information. In Northern Paganism, our ancestral bear, our bear in nature, was a focal point to our ancestral heathens, to our northern pagan ancestors. Not only the bear in nature, but the cosmic bear, the great bear constellation, Ursa Major. Our ancestors followed the cycles of these two bears the cosmic bear and our ancestral bear in nature. What the religious cults of Abraham did is to break that flow. They first targeted our bear in nature at, for extermination, extinction. They would do massive hunts of just killing, which are uh, comparable to the um, extermination buffalo hunts in the Americas. The same, it's the same modus operandi, the same tactics. So once they attempted to destroy our ancestral bear in nature, they also had to dethrone it because that bear was venerated. Its strength, its courage, its, um, its cycles in nature followed, not in a fertility cult fashion, but in a way that gives strength to self. You become the bear. The bear was seen as medicine man. We've revealed a lot in our book, uh, Northern Paganism, Baba Yaga Unveiled. And we have another one that was just uh, released from copyright, which will be available soon the choices and growth northern paganism choices and growth it's got a wealth of information especially about Valhalla if you're interested about Valhalla and why Freya chooses first then Odin what the feast in Valhalla actually is that'll be a good book to study I have on your bookshelf but that's not the reason for this video the reason for this video is because of Groundhog Day you see what the religious cults of Abraham did is they replaced Bear Day with that fuzzy little animal that comes up out of the ground, the groundhog. As a matter of fact, uh, there's three areas that I know of. Poland, Hungary, and uh, Austria that still celebrate this day, this time of year with the bear. It's called Bear Day. It's only been replaced in certain areas that still celebrate that season, America's being one of them. Poland, Hungary, and Austria retain that ancient paganism that's related to our ancestral bear. So, what is the whole deal behind Groundhog Day, Bear Day? Coming out of the ground, seeing its shadow, and going back in. Well. If it sees its shadow, you get six more weeks of winter, so it's said. See, this time of year right now is extremely important in Northern Paganism because the three giantess maidens, the three lunar cycles of winter, are slowly coming to an end, okay? With that happening, the cosmic bear, the cauldron, the basket of the bear, the cauldron of the great bear in the heavens, is slowly starting to come overhead above you. The time of rebirth, things are starting to warm up. What happens in the north, covered with snow and ice, when things start to warm up? All that snow, as it melts, it creates a mist. Northerners know this. Anyone who's raised in the northern country knows this. You get that misty fogginess that's at ground level. Okay, so the bear 
who's in hibernation, who's giving birth to her cubs right now. Her cubs are being born. Wants to know, is it safe to come out? Does she have more brutal cold thimble winter left? Or has the warmth begun to melt the snows? Food sources are becoming available. So, the shadow. If the bear sees the shadow, then there's no mist, there's no fog. The snows are not melting, it's still cold. You still have more winter time left. Go back to hibernation, protect your young. Once, if those mists are seen, then the shadow is not. Things are melting, ice is breaking up. You can get back into the rivers, salmon. The herbs of the ground will be coming out soon. The bear is going to be ravenously hungry and she's going to want to feed her young. That is the whole meaning behind Groundhog Day and that day replaces our ancestral bear in Northern Paganism.